Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, I want to clear up that issue that we saw in the last video where when we were using our K3D cluster, um, you know, we were having issue changing or rewriting the um, URL. And so I wasn't sure at the time if this was an issue with just K3D or just a simplified, um, you know, the, the simple clusters we were running. I know for sh for sure that it's not an issue if we had a real cluster deployment in AWS. And I mentioned that, like, don't spend too much time on it because if you had a real cluster you use in AWS or um, GCE or something like that, you wouldn't have this issue. But on our desktop, if we're playing around, that could be annoying if you actually want to test because as I showed, if you have an application that's dependent on a certain route, then the route that you configure in your ingress, now you have to account for that in your application. It just seems really inconvenient. But I played around with it and it's actually only an issue with K3D. I don't know why, but it works properly and as expected in Kind Cluster and Minikube. So I think Minikube is the easiest to actually demonstrate that it works. So it's good to have these options when you see something weird with your cluster, you could go try it somewhere else. That's one reason why I spent time illustrating the problem and now I'm spending some time showing you how to fix it. So here I'm starting with my um, browser on the Kubernetes um, website. And we started this whole Kubernetes journey, journey by installing Minikube. But for those who did not install Kube, uh, Minikube or removed it because I said, oh, I didn't see any reason why you would use Minikube once we got into K3D, well, boy, was I wrong. So here we go. Um, so go to communities.io, and once you get there, go to documentation, and then you want to go to um, set up Kubernetes, for example, and um, I think installing, oh, page scroll down, and go to install tools. And once you get to install tools, you see it out this kind cluster, mini cube. So, and then there's this mini cube getting started guide. So let's click on mini cube getting started guide. And because I'm on a Mac, it um, detected that for me. I just so happened that I'm on the x86 architecture, but you should know what kind of computer you're on. If it's a Mac Linux, what kind of architecture you're on, which means CPU type. And then we're going to do a stable version. And we're going to do, in my case, if you, depending on what you choose, it's going to show you the command. I like homebrew. I have that installed on my Mac. So I've already ran this command to install Minikube. And then it tells you if you have a problem, like maybe you had an older one, what to do if it doesn't work, but I didn't have any problems. Um, and then it tells you how to start your cluster. So I've already started my Minikube cluster because that is nothing exciting. So there's no point in wasting time and let you see that. And then it, you can confirm, um, you know, if you have any pods running, which you wouldn't by doing um, get pod minus A or whatever. So from that point, we'll just going to just don't worry about following anything else because all we want is the cluster to be up and running, at least for now. So like I said, I start my mini group cluster. So I'm going to run my favorite watch command here to watch pods, watch source and watch ingress controllers. And we should see the, we don't have any pods because we haven't started. The service here is the Kubernetes API service. That's always there. We don't have to worry about it. Nothing new. So ignore that. OK, so that's going. So let me open up a second command. And so what I want to do is start off from exactly where we left off the last time. So I'm going to copy ingress three um, and call it part four. And then I'm going to see into far four, part four ingress directory. And let me just bring up my VS code directory within this for now. So if I open this, we will see that oh, we have our ingress file here and it's saying use the middleware from traffic and all this other stuff. This Minikube cluster does not have that. And so we know that oh, it's going to fail. Well, some of the other stuff should work though, right? Like um, when I do a deployment, that should work. Well, except in pretend this cluster, we don't have this image, so that wouldn't work. Um, but when we do the second one, this is um, the second service here is Nginx, which it should pull from Docker Hub. Again, we have this second service here that our own custom service it shouldn't know to pull that. But let's see that. So let's just go try our best and run it again, um, run it again in Minikube. So if I do kubectl apply, 
and apply all the files in my KTS directory. It should try and create the service. Well, two services. Service one, a service one, a service two. A service two has two containers. A service one is one container. And then of course, you know, start services for them, the different ports. And then um, it should then try to create our deployment. And we know that we should at least expect an error because it doesn't know anything about this traffic class. So let's see. So we run this and just as I said, it should have some issue with the ingress part of it, but it seems to have created the other things. Now we are seeing an issue here with the image pool and this is to be expected because, and if you look for, for our pod call a service two, right? That's created by the, the, this deployment or a service two deployment. It's using Nginx, so I said that oh, this one should pull fine from Docker Hub. It shouldn't have any issue with that part, but it's the second, the first image here that's can pull. That's why we're seeing one of two, and we have image pull issue. So for our mini cube, if we just type mini cube and run that command, and let me zoom out a little bit, you'll see that um, there is an image command also. Where is that? Here it is, and it manages images. And so if we do image minus minus help, we'll see that all we have build, pull, all this other stuff, load. So it loads an image into Kubernetes, um, into Minikube. So my guess is this looks very much like our K3 image import command. So why not just sort of use that? So instead of import, it's load. And instead of K3D, it's Minikube. So run that and let me zoom back out here a bit because once that's in, I should expect that this should go from one of two being LT and we shouldn't see an image pull issue anymore. And let me wait for a second and see, but I do expect that to, to change and start working. It's gonna back up a little bit and then keep track. Oh, and there you go, everything is up and healthy. So why is the other one still having an image pull issue? Well, that's because when we look at the deployment for the first one, we're using a completely different image. So we need to change that. So if you remember, we changed the way um, we were naming, tagging these images. So it was more like this. And so this should import this image and should allow us to have this deployment, which is the deployment is the one that's called a service one that's creating this pod, right? Remember we use a deployment to create our pod. So once this is imported, this one here should be LT also. And so there it is. We're all healthy and everything is working fine. Great. But we don't have a valid ingress control because, well, we do have ingress control, but it didn't do um, what we expect because this doesn't matter. So I would say let's delete this because this is not valid for what we're doing. And I will say let's take this out for now. We'll sort of put back something similar. And let's just rerun this part of it. So we do cube CTL apply, and then it's just gonna apply the changes. So our service and deployments are on change. The only thing that changes is our ingress controller, and that's fine. So we don't see anything vis visual. Now, there's this really nice thing that um, Minikube has. Just like um, with K3D, or you can do like a port forward and so on, Minikube has something similar. And so what we can do is let me clean up. We can say Minikube service command. And let me actually do this. If we just type Minikube alone and you look here, you see service and it returns a URL to connect to a service. And so if we type service minus minus help to see how to use this command, we can see that how you can type um, list to list all your services, right? The URL of all your services. And so it returns a Kubernetes URL for a service in your local cluster. In the case of multiple URLs, they will be printed one at a time, blah, 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 blah. We see something here like uh, minus N for namespace, minus URL for false, because otherwise they'll try to open up the link for a service um, but with our default browser, browser that we have to find. And you may or may not want that. That's, that's up to you. And so let's just do a list. And by the way, if you look at how you use the command, it's minikube service, whatever flag you want to pass to it, then the service and any options you need to pass to your service. But we'll 
ignore that for now. Just wanted to point that out. And if I do this, we'll see that our, we do have our um, in our default namespace, we have our A service one deployment and A service two. You know, th those are our services. We give them the same name. Um, they work here. So A service one is the name of our service, A service two. And then, of course, there's the Kubernetes service. And um, in, in another namespace, there's the Kube DNS service, which we don't care about. But none of these have any ports or anything right now, target ports that we can get to. So in terms of URL. But what we really want is to have an ingress control. And so if we go back, if you remember with K3D, by default, it installs and run the traffic ingress controller. So what does um, Minikube use this? Well, new Minikube has these things like add-on, many add-ons. And if you remember, one of the add-ons that we've used in the past was a Kubernetes dashboard that you could just run Minikube dashboard, and you'll get the URL for that dashboard, and you can go see what's deployed and all that stuff. But that is just an add-on. And so if you click on add-ons, and you take a look here at some of the add-ons that they describe, but one is this in ingress DNS. And it tells you like what the problem is, that you want to really access stuff from like, outside, yada, yada. But they also show you here how you can use this command, minikube add-ons enable, and you can enable the ingress controller. And then there's an ingress DNS. There's a domain name service, but we're not gonna worry about that. That has nothing to do with naming things. And so I'll focus on this one. But since this is a command for minikube, let's just explore it and see what else we can see. So I'll clean up here and I'll say minikube add-ons. And if I list this, you can see it tells you, you can do configure, you can do disable, you can do enable, which we saw, you can do images, you can do lists, open. So I would like to do list. I want to see what's available. And there's this nice list that tells you these, this is the add-on name, the status, whether it's enable or disable. The one I'm interested in is this ingress one, like I mentioned before, right? And so let's enable the ingress um, add-on. So enable ingress. And so that's going to do its magic. Install the Minikube ingress add-on. And notice the ingress add-on for Minikube, it uses engine X as the ingress controller. And we talk about it as the ingress controller is our service. It's just a specific type of service. And so now that's installed, let's now go and do Minikube again, service list, and see what we have this time. And now we can see it all we have these two ingress service, but they're these two, ingress nginx controller and then ingress nginx controller admission. And notice that they're in a different namespace. That's important. Um, they're not in the default namespace, but notice our ingress controller is listening on port 80 and port 443. So it's listening on the regular HTTPS port, HTTP port and HTTPS port, which is also what we had with Trafik, it was listening on the 8 port 80 and we bind to it on our computers. So what we can do then is tell, um, use Minikube to sort of give us a URL to our ingress controller. And then once we have a connection to our ingress controller, that should get us using those paths that we have to our service. So, because that's how we need it, was an ingress controller. So how do we get our ingress controller? Well, this command told us. It told us that you can use the Minikube service to get a URL to your service, right? So all we have to do is say, so we want to access this service, which as a port, we can see the port right there. So if I do that and I say paste that, and I don't want to try and open up a browser, so I'm actually going to say minus minus URL equals fall to not open up a browser. Yep, so that's what I want. Then if I run this now, it says, oh, you may select another namespace by using internet da 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 minus n for namespace. And that's because it couldn't find our ingress internet controller in the default namespace. Notice that the, default, the namespace is going to use, with, if you don't tell it, is default. So um, we need to use this. And so it's saying that we could put minus n at the end 
of the command and do this to say use that um, namespace. And notice now when we run this, you can see it connected to the Nginx ingress um, controller. And it gives us a port to a URL to those. Now these are internal to the cluster using the node name, the node IP of our node that represents our cluster. So we don't act, we're not on that cluster, so we couldn't access it. But no, look at this. It also gives us the one that's local that we can access to. I know I can get to this locally on my machine because look at the IP address. It's the loopback address. So I'll just use command here. I mean, I could copy it easily, but I'm assuming this first one is the for port 80, and this one is for port 80, 80, for port or three, you know, HTTPS. So I'm not going to use that. So why then is this not working? Well, it's actually working because we're hitting that ingress controller. But remember, for our ingress, what did we use? We use slash serve one, slash serve two, and slash nginx. So that's what we have to type here to get to our different services. So SRV1, and there we go. API version running as API service, da, 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 on whatever, um, you know, pod that is. And same thing, if I do two, I get my different, you see, got request, which is a different message. And that tells our version 02, because remember, we wrote a different application, right? When we did the second deployment, it was using this guy, version 2 of our application. And now, if we try to hit the Nginx one, oh, we have not found. Well, why not found? Because this is the problem we run into where Nginx itself is looking for this path. And we just seen that that's the path that gets passed through to our services. So we're back to the problem, but then here's how we solve it. The thing we have to do is in our English controller, we can now do that annotation, but now we're doing the annotation, not for traffic, but rather for Nginx. And so the way you do that is you say kubectl that io forward slash ingress that class. We had this before, and this time it's Nginx, whereas before it was traffic. And then now we say nginx that ingress that Kubernetes that IO forward slash. We want to do rewrite the target to be slash, which means if I am passing or calling the service with this or configure the service with this, when you actually make a call to our path to our service and goes to the application running that pod, I want you to just pass forward slash. Now there are other patterns you can use here for matching. And their regular expression pattern. If you don't know regular expression pattern, don't worry, we're not going to talk about it now. And you can actually say, well, I want to use the second part or other parts of the regular expression, but we're not going to focus on that. I just wanted to show you how this actually works now. And so now that we've done that, let's just open up. Let's go back here. Let's create another um, thing. And you know what? We actually don't need to be running our um, watch command because nothing changes there and we still need this right so this needs to be to keep the URL open we still need this running so we don't close that but now what I can do is I can then do kubectl apply again kubectl apply and now this is gonna update our ingress to say use that redirect um, that rewrite rule and for the annotation. And so if I go back here now and notice, I'm just going to refresh and notice now welcome to Nginx. And so we are successfully rerouting to that. And of course, himself, I do like other or something like that. It's still going to work because we're saying, regardless of what I pass, rewrite it to just slash. Like I said, there are ways you can do more complex pattern matching and so on. And just to prove to you that this is working, if I do while and then I do, for example, and then I loop over, you'll see that oh, it is actually hidden that um, thing. And I can prove that further by opening up another thing here. And then what I can do is say kubectl logs minus follow. And I want to follow um, the service that we have, um, or you can use the pod. So um, the service we have is service and then a server 
is order to I think it's called right C service is server two. Yep, is server two. And then I want to do the container is nginx. And if I do that, you can see it's following it and you can see it's saying get slash. And that is because regardless of what we pass, we're saying redirect it to slash. And you can see those requests are going through. All right. So just wanted to clear that up for you, just in case you write your application and you get, you're having some problems and you want to test it. Um, you could just spit up me a cube, do that test. So the thing that doesn't work in cube three, K3D, you can run it in Minikube, you have options. Like I say, I like using K3D because it gives me that more realistic Kubernetes cluster, like I have multiple nodes. You can do that with Minikube also, it's just a little bit more configuration and work. So I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. So see you in the next video. Please let me know if you have trouble, if you have questions, um, thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the support. Thanks for coming back and watching the video. Thanks for giving the thumbs up. Um, on that note, if you watch this video and you're not subscribed, you like the material, please consider subscribing. I really love to have you subscribe. Um, have you also subscribed to help the channel grow. If you're a returning um, subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, please thumbs up the video, leave a comment. Um, those sort of things help um, the YouTube algorithm in terms of making it the video popular. Okay, take care, see you, stay safe, bye.